Honey, uh, obviously a, a pretty big announcement before the game, you know, regarding your future with the organization. If it being a, a mutual decision, why do you feel it, it, it was the best decision for you? Uh, I think always you try to follow your heart, and um, and that's what I do. Uh, honestly, you you know what's inside of you. Uh, and you try to be uh, deliberate and let things like work through, uh, and then you just follow your heart and you know when you know wh what's the right thing. Was it something that you had thought about before the start of the season? This potentially being you know one of your final years here, or was it something that developed as the season went on? No, I just kind of kept it like for me. I wanted to like focus on just winning and try to put all my efforts into this club this year uh trying to win i felt like we were in we came out of spring training we felt good about our club um and it just didn't work so i, I really didn't want to think about this decision uh i want to just push it aside do my job be ready to go every day you know try to get us to play the best baseball we could um and then over time you, you know you just it just comes to the surface. What was the conversation like with the guys in the clubhouse, giving them the news? Especially, I mean, you have some guys that have been with you since the start, or more or less the start in there? Yeah, it's simple. Uh, honestly, just I really wanted to give them information before you got information, and try to you know you want you don't want them to be surprised by anything that's that's going to come out, and that, that's the main thing. And then really just kind of the message with the coaches and the players was, you know, I'm grateful for the effort. Uh, on both sides and, and I've watched our coaches uh, this year and things again we all believed when we walked out of spring training that we were going to be one of these teams going down the stretch that we were all looking at standings and who's winning here and who's winning there uh, but no matter what has happened these guys have continued to work and continue to teach and and continue to help these try to help these guys get better uh, every day and you i don't know if you're around the ballpark a lot these guys are doing early work almost every day uh, never stops right and then from the player side of it they keep working right no matter what the results we're getting they continue to work and continue to try to get better and that's really what you ask you know from a manager standpoint uh the last thing you want your club to do is not play hard and that's something that I've I've actually, you know, there's always a time here, a time there. You don't like what it looks like, but in general, the clubs I've had have always played hard, and I've always been, you know, I've always felt proud of that, and uh, not always getting the results you want, but always been proud of the effort. And and again, this year's club is no different. How would you, I guess, characterize your tenure, you know, since 2016 to now? Yeah, I mean. It's it's been different than I've kind of envisioned, just because of the changes, right? I didn't, and you know, I, I went went through the ownership change in LA, uh, didn't envision it coming here, uh, and then obviously this year another big change, so it's it's been a little different. Um, I, I thought we were turning the corner in twenty. You know, we we kind of maybe overachieved just a touch uh, in 20, but I thought we were starting to gain that confidence and that unity as the organization was moving forward that um, we were going to be able to turn the corner. Last year was disappointing, and then this year has really been you know, kind of more of the same. And, and that's really kind of the conclusion I come to is, is it's time for a new voice. Right. You know, it's it's time. I think it's best for the organization, quite honestly, that we that we have a new voice uh, and in and, and move forward. So. So how do I characterize it? I'm probably disappointed. I came here to build something uh, and, and hopefully in something that was sustainable, uh, that when you left here, you felt like, OK, the organization's in a great spot. Uh, I came here with loads of loads of hitting and stacked lineup uh and then we we've, we've kind of flipped the script a little bit we haven't swung the bats as well uh and produced hitters we've been producing pitchers ever since right and uh so it's kind of flipped a little bit but that being said i think the organization's in a good spot from the standpoint of it's hard to find these kind of guys that can keep every game close and keep you in it uh and now it'll be, you know, Kim and the organization's, you know, job to 
get into the winter and figure out how do we how do we win with with this and what's the formula and what's the style or wh- whatever we think you know we need to do to be able to play you know better baseball consistently and compete would you like to be part of the future here in some way you know craig is for me this is a time like to finish the season strong uh, get home with, you know, with with Lori and, and the boys, and just let things kind of do what I do usually is just kind of let you follow your heart, not try to force anything, see what happens with you, uh, see how you're feeling, and then going from there. I know I feel great, my mind still works. Some of you guys might argue differently at times, but I feel like my mind works good, um, my body feels great, you know, still feel good so you know i don't want to go sit on the couch nah, that's for sure so you've been through so many things um it's been six years ago today with jose and posies and everything but if there's something you feel most proud of in that many process that you went through in, in the last uh, six seven years what would it be well i mean obviously like been through a lot you're right the jose thing i I wasn't aware i'm not very good with birthdays and all that stuff i guess that's the male side of me uh don't know what whose birthdays when but and didn't realize that today uh miggy came in was talking about it and i was like oh my gosh today (laughs) had to be today so but you know as much as anything I, i tried to handle myself uh well here, tried to represent the organization uh, the best I could, uh, tried to get the best out of our players, tried to do what's right for the organization at all times, and and tried to, you know, try to do that. So I'm proud of that. Um, yeah, so I guess, you know, other than we've had guys develop, watching guys, different players develop, that's always special for a coach uh, to watch players develop. And, you know, watching Miggy over the years really has been special. Watching Sandy and Pablo and these guys, watching Jesus, uh, Lazardo this just this year. Um, you know, there's lots of things that you see that you love watching because you like seeing guys get better. Um, so... You know, lots of things, but not so not just one thing. Tony, you, you said through the years every year at the beginning of the year that the reason why you stuck around this long is for the teaching. You've always loved teaching and loving and teaching new players, kind of going through it. Knowing that there's you know, certainly a chance that this will be your last time being able to do that here, and maybe even who knows what else at the end of the season, is that something that's still driving you to get back in there to just get back out there and help kids? I always tell the story about the old farmers, right? They start off farming 5,000 acres and they go to 550 and they end their life with a garden, right? So I, you always want to keep teaching, right? And you, if you love what you do and you want the sport to grow and things like that, there's different areas. But I got a seven-year-old at home. I know I can, maybe they'll let me help coach that team. <laughs> I'm not sure. Um, so we'll see what happens uh, again. Um, you know, again, I feel good. You know, you just don't know where the if I'm in the garden stage yet. So. You mentioned the new voice, and I think Sherman in his statement said that as well. What, in your opinion, what does that new voice, what should it entail? Uh, that's, that's not for me, I don't think. I think, um, you know, conversations with Bruce early on was like, Bruce, I feel like we need a new voice here. And and I think Kim deserves a chance to, you know, she didn't pick me. Uh, not, I don't know if we've gotten along great, I mean, you know, respect everything she's she's doing and trying to do uh so but she does deserve the chance to you know kind of pick her guy and 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 push the direction that she wants to go so uh i don't i don't know um yeah i I really it's hard for me to answer that but i do feel like it's it's time for a new one as you transition out you know of your job here have you spoken with any players and talked about maybe or at least thought about yourself of keeping an open dialogue with them as you kind of tra- uh, transition out of the organization? You know? We haven't talked too much about that. I mean, obviously, this is the first day they've heard any of this stuff. Um, yeah, and I, and I don't know what happens to me, so I don't know what my sure. what happens or where I go. But I'm always, you know, always willing to help guys. You know, I talk to guys at different times that I've had over the years that, you know, they'll call me on hitting and and you know what I'm doing this or what's going on and and you know I try to find some video and and look at it uh so you know so you're you kind of always do that 
you know, you have that uh, not really obligation, and you got to be quiet. You got to be careful because you've got guys you're going to be playing against. You know, that next season you don't want to be like helping this dude, and he goes in the papers next year and goes, "Man, Donnie really helped me last year." You know, <laughs> you know, and he's dropping two homers on us or something. It's like, oh, okay, so you got to be careful. Um, but yeah, I always want to. You know, if guys want want to look at stuff and do stuff, I, I try to do it. Last thing for me, Don, do you believe uh, where this is headed right now in the future? Where the organization is and where it's going in the future? Well, I know the one thing, you can win with pitching. And right, so uh, I know that at that part of it, you look at it and you feel like it's, it's in a good spot, right? And I know... You know, we talk about one-run games, uh, the number of one-run games this year. Uh, I always look at that twofold, right? We 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 didn't win this many one-run games, but we did win a bunch of the other ones. So if if you win more of the one side of it, you may lose money <laughs> on the, the the back side of that, the ones you do win. So I do think that um, you know we have to find a way to you know have a sustain, sustainable offense where you, you're putting runs up. And uh, I think that's that's where you, you, can, you can't just go crazy and like, because I mean, honestly, this year, if if you really look at it, and I don't want to make excuses because of, and they, they don't do anybody any good, but, you know, Jazz stays healthy, Wendell and Anderson stay healthy all year long, you know, Burt stays healthy, Solaire's uh, does just what he does, and Avi just does what he does, and Aggie, when he was here, just does what he usually does. You know, those things, this is a whole different look, right, and uh, as far as the club um, goes. So from that standpoint, you you know, this page can turn quickly, and all that goes right. And that's one thing I think when you look at Miami, you look at, like, Things need to fall your way some, right? You need to have a little luck where you keep guys on the field. Your rotation stays healthy. Guys do have the years that they're capable of because you don't feel like you're going to, uh, at this point at least, just go reaching down and grabbing another guy to fill in that spot, and it's seamless, right? you gotta, you got to get to that point. So I do think it can change quickly, uh, and I know you can win with pitching, and that's – you know, at the area right now, if you just look at it on paper, you're going to go, what's well, it's pretty good. And you also hear about some guys that are down in the minor leagues that take time to develop. They're not out, they're very rarely, you know, you talk about some of the names. They don't just walk up here and, and they're Sandy, right? Sandy took three or four years, right? So that stuff has to be, the pipeline has to kind of continue. And it can't be all at once. It needs to be one here and one there. Uh, so... You might have alluded to, but is that almost something when you you know you were with the Dodgers and then you know coming to the Marlins are completely different? And whether it's payroll, and just the diamond. Obviously, it's been however many years now, but is that something that over the years you kind of come to realize like there is a very specific way that things need to go all right? Or well, you always learn, right? I knew what I was walking into, uh, honestly, and was looking forward to that. Uh, you know, been with been with New York, where it's you know payroll heavy. Uh, LA had become that same thing, where the it's almost like if you don't win at all, you had a bad year. It's a bad. It's not a necessary. That's a tough road to to go, you know. Uh, so I knew it was about building and developing, and 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 not going to be just go go fix it right with that. And you can't make mistakes, right? You make mistakes with a free agent and. and a, cost you and it could cost you for a year or two so those are all delicate issues right so it's hard to hard to like you, you got to be good at what you do right and that was the challenge right of, of coming in and trying to do it right um you know yeah so it hasn't always went perfectly more to the game side of things when we transition out of the uh, i guess the existential um with edward today obviously we saw the injury in the fourth inning X-rays were negative. Do you think this is a season ender for him, given where we are, or do you think he makes another start before? Uh... I'm hoping he makes another start. Um, I think Lee sounded encouraged when I talked to him about where we're at with Edward. Um, he, just the fact that he 
you know, when he, when he went down, I thought, like, this thing, he turned this ankle and he's not walking off this field. And then he pops up and walks up and throws balls. And I'm like, oh, maybe, right? And then so uh, hopefully that's a good sign moving forward. Obviously, you don't want him. And really the reason of pulling him today was you don't want him not pushing off and all of a sudden not using his legs and now he hurts his arm. So that's the main thing. Like, he felt anything at all. I told Miggy, when, you know, making sure and at least speaks, you know, fluent Spanish with him that if he's feeling anything he and Mel's watching out there too and Mel's like he's not pushing off he's not using his lower half and that kind of made the decision now we're not going to let him you know try it mm -hmm. yeah I was going to ask how, how was that conversation like with Miguel there and, and Seems like was to do yeah, simple as that. I think Ed, Edward, you know, I was worried more he might have hurt his hand hitting the ground than after. You know, know a lot, obviously, during our post-game pressures when we kind of espouse on the prowess of the pitching that the organization has built over the years. If you were to make a pitch, I guess, to Kim and Co. to kind of keep him here long term, what would you say to them? I don't think you have to pitch that. <laughs> uh, you know, Mel's going to... Uh, I guess fortunate thing for Mel and unfortunate thing for the organization. Mel's probably going to have options of, of kind of, you know, he's did a tremendous job. I think we see the the guys they respond to him, and and I, he's just a tremendous worker, right? He's got works and he studies and he's he's just relentless on his pitchers, right? And them getting better and how do we get better? And no matter if it's Sandy, it's how do we get him better. Uh, it, it doesn't matter, so that that moves on. But I, I think they know what they have uh, with Mel. Is he a lot of his dad in him? Because I know you guys had dialogue when he was the pitching coach in New York, and you were there as well. It's definitely a lot of his dad in there. Uh, but this is a different time. Like right? Mel is fluent in the the analytics and how they work and how do you use them. But also on the other side of how does that. How do you use that information and what causes that information to come up on the paper like this? Uh, and that's where Mel's, you know, I think the guys that have an understanding of how it works, right? It's not just what time is it, it's how does a clock get made, right? In that sense, like you form those, those numbers come from how you do it. And so that's where he's really good at both sides of it. So, uh, I don't want to say he's better than his dad. I would never say that because he would not like that either. Mel's dad was great, and uh, he's given a lot to Mel. So, uh, you know, but there, there's some similarities for sure. Donnie, did you get a good look? You know, what was just your perspective of the play with C.J. Abrams? You know, it looked like maybe he had slightly touched it with his foot, but again, the yeah, it looked like his, like as he's going to catch that ball, his foot got there in front and it kicked the front foot up. And then I couldn't really tell on the back. Uh, obviously, uh, Billy thought he, he didn't get it. And, you know, it looked like it, was a, I didn't, it didn't seem very clear on the replay, the ones they showed. So um, this is a different play, right? Because, uh, you know, uh, yeah, so it's, you know, you have to go tag. I don't think he had to go all the way there to tag him. I think he can just touch, touch the base at that point. But there was a little confusion going on there.